Hello everyone! Kukuhanin natin ang interest rate using the formula for compound interest. Ang formula na to is computing for the final amount yung rate natin ay nasa loob. Kaya we have to do some manipulations. But first, let us be familiar dun sa ating components ng formula. This A, eto yung final amount natin. Kapag dinagdag na natin yung compound interest dun sa ating principal amount or initial amount which is represented by this capital letter P. Then we are multiplying dito sa ating nasa loob 1 plus R. Ito yung rate of interest natin in decimal and then yung nasa denominator na N this is the number of period in a year. Kapag sinabi that we are compounding annually then that is just one time in a year kaya ang N natin is 1. Kung semi-annually then ang N natin is 2. Kapag quarterly ang N naman natin is 4. Apat na beses sa isang taon. And then kapag monthly, our N is equal to 12. Then yung nasa loob is raised to the products nung N natin times our time T in years. This is the formula for compound interest. Now let us apply this para makuha natin yung interest rate dito sa ating problem. Mr. A borrowed an initial amount of 15,000 pesos from his friend then paid 16,500 pesos after one year. If the interest was, this is compounding, this is compounding monthly, what is the rate of interest? Daanan natin yung ating values para makuha natin yung ating mga given. As we check our problem, yung ating 15,000, ito yung pera na hiniram. This is our initial amount. Kaya we can say that this is our principal amount, which is yung ating 15,000 pesos. Then, binayaran daw yung utang na 15,000 pesos ng 16,500. That is our final amount represented by the capital letter A. Isulat natin yung ating 16,500. Then yung span, bago mabayaran yung utang, dumaan tayo ng isang taon. So we have our time, that is equal to 1 year. Then for our last given value, ang sabi ay we are compounding monthly. Kaya our n is just equal to 12 kasi meron tayong labing dalawang buwan sa loob ng isang taon. Then we have to solve. Ang hinahanap is our interest rate that is the small letter r. Ngayon, gamitin na natin yung ating given values for us to solve our problem. For our solution, gamitin na natin yung ating formula ng compound interest. That is, our A, final amount, is just equal to the principal times 1 plus R rate over N number of period raised to N times time in years. Let us just substitute yung mga nasa given values papunta sa ating formula. Let's start dito sa ating left side yung ating A. We have our 16,500. This is our final amount and equal to ang ating principal amount na P, that is 15,000 pesos. So let us write it down, times 1 plus ang R natin, ito yung hinahanap, and this is over. Our N is just equal to 12 kasi monthly tayo, and this is raised to yung products nung N at T, ang N natin ay 12, ang T naman natin ay 1. So this is 12 times 1 or simply equal to 12. Then, hindi agad natin masasolve yung value ng ating R kasi nakakulong pa siya dito sa ating grouping symbol. Kaya, let us simplify this one step at a time. Unahin muna natin yung ating 15,000. Dahil product siya, para matanggal natin yung 15,000 dito sa ating right side, kasi ang kailangan lang natin ay R, so we divide both sides of our equation by 15,000. Sulat natin siya dito sa ating right side tsaka dito sa ating left side nung equation. Then dahil pareho yung nasa numerator at denominator, we can perform our division. If we divide this, ang sagot lang ay 1, kaya ang matitira na lang ay etong part na to. Then let us simplify. Yung nasa right side natin, okay na yan. Yung left side natin, we have 16,500 divided by 15,000. That is just equal to 1.1. Then this is equal to 1 plus r over 12 raised to 12. Ngayon, kailangan natin yung r kaso nga lang meron pa tayong exponent na 12. Kailangan natin siyang tanggalin. Kaya follow me here, para matanggal natin yung ating exponent na 12, then you get yung 12th root ng ating equation, both dito sa ating 
left side tsaka sa right side. Kasi kapag ka ginawa natin to, yung part na nandito, mawawala yung exponent na 12, mawawala rin yung 12th root, and then medyo makakaluwag na yung term sa nasa loob natin. So we have the 12th root of 1.1. Pwede nyo tong i-compute, pero for the sake of this problem, hindi muna natin siya gagawin. So this is equal to 1 plus r over 12. You may solve for this one directly. Pwede nyo na siyang i-compute sa inyong calculator. Depende na sa teacher ninyo kung ilang decimal places kayo mag-round off. Pero for us to avoid round off error, hindi muna natin siya i-compute. Then ang kailangan natin ay yung value ng ating r. Ang gagawin lang natin ay yung 1. Ililipat natin siya sa kabilang side ng ating equation. So this is equal to yung 12th root ng ating 1.1. This is minus yung ating positive 1 na nasa right side will become negative 1 and then natira na lang dito sa right side ay r over 12. Then to solve for the value ng ating r, kailangan natin tanggalin yung 12 na nasa denominator. Para mawala siya, let us multiply both sides of our equation by 12. Then yung 12, imumultiply natin dun sa nasa left side natin which is the 12th root of 1.1 minus 1, this is already equal to r. Ngayon, dahil r na lang, yung nasa isang side ng ating equation, pwede na natin gamitan ng calculator yung nasa left side. So, the value of our r upon our computation, this is just equal to 0.0957 in 4 decimal places or kapag i-convert natin siya to percentage, this is equal to 9.57%. This is our computer rate of interest. Ito na yung ating final answer. As a note lang, kung nahihirapan kayo sa pag-manipulate ng ating equation, pwede nyo na siyang i-compute directly itong part na to para magkakaroon na kayo ng number. Ginawa lang natin itong buong process na to para mas maging accurate yung sagot natin. So again, this is how we compute for the rate of compound interest. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone! I am Sir Kenneth of STEM Teacher PH. Kung nakatulong sa'yo itong video na to, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell para updated kayo sa ating uploads. Bye!